Hey, you. Hey, what's up, dude? Not too much. Have it with you? Not much. I have high Did expectations you? for this, okay? High expectations, okay. By the end of this good. lesson, I want to be as good as Idra holding off two racks and bunker rushes, all right? Idra lost 3-1 to Jinro. <laughs> I expect more from you, okay? I know. I'm kidding. It was really I sad. I expect for you not to move your zerglings away right when they're about to kill a 5 HP marine. Oh, boy. I expect you not to do that, okay? <laughs> Wasn't that sad? I Just, like... Was... Yeah. When, like, you saw he could have hit the, Zerg the Marine. He could have hit it before he got to the bunker, and he pulls his units back. It, if only if only Zerg could make little... Or, yeah, if only Zerg could make micro-mistakes like that, not auto-lose games would be great. But I'm just kidding. I didn't pay you for an hour to rage for Terran <laughs> about an hour, because I could do that for many hours. Actually, I guess I didn't pay you at all, so... <laughs> um, does it bother you if I uh, stream this? Do you prefer to keep it offline, or...? Either way's fine. I was just going to ask that. Okay. Um, I'm perfectly fine with either way. Um, I guess the guy who bought it for you really wants you to, but I don't know. <laughs> that doesn't matter to me. Whatever you guys have worked out or whatever's best for you, I'm fine with. Okay, that's cool. I'll, I'll probably stream it then, since that's what I do with pretty much everything. Okay, perfectly fine. My roommate came in and kind of messed up my head up a little bit today. That's a pain. Like, messed up my mouse and messed up my keyboard. Sad face. Alright. <clears throat> so I think the best thing to do uh, with someone of your caliber, like I've ever, I never actually coached someone who's like very high master, very high diamond. Okay. Uh, so I can't do like the normal things that I would normally do where it's like, okay, let me check out a replay of yours and I'll come up with basic ideas and I'll work on them. Like that probably won't be that beneficial for you. Alright. Um, so a few of the things I thought of, <clears throat> I, I've actually watched a few of your games and even played you a bunch in ZBZ lately. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the first thing, uh, the first thing I saw lately, was uh, a couple of mistakes in your ZBZ, <laughs> or at least things <laughs> oh, that God. I think. Are, I'm, I'm not trying to be mean with this. No, I you understand. Know. Actually, You've um, seen mistakes in my play too. If if I and if I can make one request, I'm not trying to undermine you or anything. Um, of course. My ZBZ is right now is completely and totally unconventional, and it's a disaster. And um, I was actually gonna sit down and hammer out like 15 games with moment to try and work out like a standard <laughs> ZBZ. Like literally, my ZBZ standard play right now is a one base, two gas, three infester rush. And yeah. I don't know why it works sometimes, but it does. But I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I was kind of hoping to look more at, like I feel like my ZBT and my ZBP are much more uh, solid. Okay. And um, right now I could tell you a million things wrong with my ZBZ build just because it's so kind of out there crazy. <laughs> um, but I mean, I guess if you had any general comments, I mean, go ahead, go for it. Uh, well, just one second. I'm going to see if I can find someone to play. We're kind of different match after. I guess I'll just look separately. Um, okay, the main thing I wanted to say is something that I've, I've talked a lot about on my stream is just why do you scout with the drone? Um, the drone scout, um, yes. I think is actually, Why? it's because of the way that my build works, it's really important. Um, typically Why? what I do is I have an overlord outside of the Zerg base and I have a drone scout. Um, after I do the initial scout, you know, just to make sure there's not a seven pull or anything, I'll pull the drone mm -hmm. out or make it look like it's leaving and then I'll but sneak it. First of all, first what? of all, just right there, simple mistake. Uh, why are you worried if you're seven pulling or not? Um, I don't know, just to see it, to mentally prepare myself. Okay, do you I think guess your overlords would see it around the same time? Yeah, you know what, you're right, that's true. And even if you see it, it's not really going to change the fact that your drones can really kill it. Yeah, yeah, that'll be 13 or 14 pulling regardless. Yes. But the, um, the, the second... Well, I guess it kind of depends on in some matchups. Because I guess in some matches, regardless if they're going to simple, like in Metalopolis, I would want to scout <laughs> with a drone anyway, because my overlord won't necessarily find their base initially. Or would, would you disagree with that too? Well, your overlord might not find their base initially, true, but what would the information, like, like would you still want to know if they're doing a 7 pool? Um, well, the main reason that I scout early is because, um, I check the, uh, the, uh, gas timing. Um, it okay. seems that if a zerg throws down a gas at around the same time as the spawning pool, it means that they're going to be doing some kind of speed link build. If the gas goes down, like, halfway through the spawning pool finishes, it could be one base roach or some kind of an infester build. Or, I'm sorry, not an infester build, a fast expansion build. The, uh, oh, the main, the main thing that I do with my drone, the reason, um, why I keep it in the enemy base is because after six links leave the Zerg base, I mm -hmm. sneak the drone in and I look for one of three things. I look for either the Baneling nest going down, which means I need to be ready for Banelings or some kind of crazy Baneling bust. I see a Roach Warren going down, which means I need to be ready for one base Roaches, or I see nothing. He's pulled his drones off gas and he's expanding. Those are the three things that I look for when I uh, bring that drone in after the links leave the enemy base. So that later information is the more important of the two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Think, right? Yeah. 
right, so let me, let me clar cl clarify this up a bit for you then. Okay. I'm I'm a hundred percent sure that what you should do instead of that uh -huh. is like e even if you scout and if you want to see something like earlier, if you want to stop a fast expansion, if you think that they're gonna do that, that's it's okay, but it's it's still not something I would I would think because sending out an early drone, you send out like almost a nine in order to see this sort of early information. Even at thirteen, it's gonna cost you hundreds of minerals, mm -hmm. um, and it's so much better. Uh, just instead of that. You, you want to time it so whenever your, your spawning pool finishes, if you do an earlier one, and I mean, this is debatable if you think hatch first is better or not. I, I think in most maps it's better to go pool first. Um, that's kind of my standard build in ZVZ. And, and I haven't fully worked out if you, if you hatch first, that, if it's better to, to scout or not. But I know for sure if you do pool first, it's, it's not. And the reason, let me, let me get to the reason of it, is what you do with those first two zerglings mm -hmm. is you don't care if they die. You, you could care less. You're sending them rallied straight to your opponent's base to see exactly those things you talked about. Yeah. Are the three drones off? Are they making roaches? Are they making banelings? And what you do in the meantime is A, you're either getting, you're usually getting zergling speed. The point of that is, is, is explanatory in itself. Like if they're expanding, you want to put pressure on with zergling speed and expand yourself. Um, if, if they're not expanding, if they're doing some sort of roach play, you can just cancel speed throw down your own roach warren and you'll have a better economy than them just by essence of you know you've been uh <laughs> you've been kind of not really making lings you've been just making a couple drones in that time period and they're probably making a bunch of lings or even just making roach warren before you so they use that drone a little before you okay um if they're doing some sort of really quick uh zergling baneling you'll have either a something i like to do is well of course you know how you wall your base in. you use the roach warren and the spawning pool mm -hmm. and you use two queens um, so I've started liking to get a second queen early um, to a either either go out and pick off my opponent's overlords if they're playing really defensively, or to b just to use it to help defend that early zergling pressure and just you know put <laughs> both queens in those little areas on the sides. Let's go ahead and build like an evolution chamber in the other spot and like a spine crawler in the other spot. And there's absolutely nothing that can get in very easily, and you should have roaches out before the, either the lings or the banelings can break your queens or whatever buildings you have generally sure um, so, so basically again, so ba so basically what i'm taking this from this is instead of scouting with that early drone at all i'll just wait for my first hit of lings because i'll get pretty much the same information either way yes okay yeah like, okay like, i totally agree with that it, it makes sense right yeah because then the drone could be mining minerals the whole time and yes exactly and it's it's, it's actually a really huge deal it's it's what it's like <laughs> all early game is just Okay, are my banelings quicker than your banelings, or are my roaches quicker? Can you defend my attack? Like, you, you know all that stuff. It's yeah, yeah, that's that's why my ZVZ build things. is so unconventional. I hate uh, mirror builds and mirror matchups. They drive me absolutely crazy. Exactly. I don't, did you ever it's play Brood easy. War? Yeah, yeah I played Brood, 11 years of Brood War. Brood War ZVZ drive me absolutely fucking crazy, you know? What was, what was your name on Brood War, if I might ask? You don't know me. I'm, I was terrible. <laughs> I promise. Okay. I was Neo Destiny on Brood War. I was never big or anything. I remember Neo. I probably actually remember you. I, I, I doubt it. The highest I ever got up on I Cup was like B minus in one season. Otherwise, I was like C C plus. I was uh, Ghost in the Making, probably Omni, or I was anything with Chosen. I don't know. Yeah. I actually remember a lot of the Gidim Ghost in the Making people, but I don't know. I hung out with all those guys back in the day. I was I was in like Light and Meteor Makers and all those Tot even for a bit. But anyway, we're not here to talk about Brood War and Reminisce. Oh, that's fun. I love Brutor. <laughs> right, so yeah, the drone thing is one thing I noticed. And then, uh, like you said with ZVZ, we can, I, I can probably help you a lot with the theory crafting of that. Or mm -hmm. if you'd rather work on a different matchup, we can work on that. I'd rather I work on I'm... a different matchup just because, okay. like, literally, like, you're, you're a much better player than me um, in a lot of ways. And I feel like that if I were to have you coach me on what I'd be working up from literally a platinum level, like that, like my ZVZ, <laughs> I don't have a build at all. It would be a waste of uh, both of our times. <laughs> I, I could like, I could just watch replays and try and start to get down bills and stuff for ZBZ. Right. Well, a lot of this stuff is also I want you to be coming up with a counter argument. Like if you think something I said is stupid, <clears throat> you got to have a reason for it. Yeah, I understand that and definitely. Like the same thing with the, my little ling scout. Maybe there's a good reason to do the drone scout, but I just haven't found it yet, and I think my argument's better in this case. No, it is definitely because if like, it's mainly it was t just to see for that seven pull or whatever, and, it, and whether or not they're seven pulling, I'm still going to thirteen or fourteen pull. Even if I know they're seven pulling, I'm still going to thirteen fourteen pull because I can hold it off with drones anyway. So I hundred percent agree with you there. Okay, good. All right, so now to work on a different matchup, um, a couple options. I can find a replay that, that brings out really good points, and you can find a replay that brings out good points. We'll watch both of them, and then we'll play a ZVP game. I'm probably around a 2800, 2900 Protoss. 
Okay. Master League. So then we can watch that replay if you want to. Um, so just find a, a good replay of yours versus a Protoss. Excuse me, and I'll do the same. I wish, man, I've played so many games against Minigun, but all of our games mm -hmm. are so ridiculous. I don't know if they make for good. Um, whatever you think. Even the ridiculous ones have their points. You'd be surprised. Sure. Um, surprised. fuck. I found one that I like for you. Okay. Let me send it over. We don't have to do two if you can't find one, but it's just easier. Yeah, that's fine. And it's, um, it's fun and one thing, one, one, quick, can, good. one quick comment I have about um Terran. I feel like I'm getting really good with dealing with the um the whole Terran into mass marine siege tank play. Yes, um, me too. The the one problem I'm having is um Go it on. seems like a lot of Terrans are really reckless with the first push. They have no problem yes. driving their tanks and marines up onto your creep and just setting shop up so that you can bring your bailings in and rape them. One problem yeah. I'm having is when Terrans play very 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 safe. When they siege at the end of your creep scan destroy your tumors move three tanks up keep three tanks back and do that um do you think that you need infestors incorporated in with your armies to stop those like little pushes or what nope <laughs> um and this is something that i've i've started to learn and i, I really think it's true um zbt it it goes against so much that you've learned in <laughs> in this game <laughs> it's such a simple maneuver like if, if you're in a war let me, let me pose a really simple war question for you. Your opponent has a, a very strong home country, um, but you're, you're both on a, like the same continent. Mm -hmm. Your opponent is is slowly now providing uh, just this, this this slow push with his with his huge army. It's not that mobile, but he has his huge army. It's slowly pushing towards your base. Is this going to end options, with me running around and hitting his main base? Your your options from this point are either to attack into it. Or to just give up whatever he wants to slowly attack and use your mobile armory to either a cut cut the reinforcements around first, and then just try and defend, or just like you said, go for his base while his forces are away, mm -hmm. and then come back and save what you can. <laughs> you know. And I and I've tried that. I've actually got quite a few um ZVP games where that happens. When I see the unstoppable Protoss ball, I'll, I'll throw down 19 <laughs> spine crawlers on my main, um, screw my expansion, <laughs> and run to the Protoss's base and just kill everything. So I, I kind of understand that theory sometimes. Um, the only problem is that um versus Terran, it seems like mm -hmm. that kind of thinking can be extremely map oriented. Um, like what you just said there could work really well on Jungle Basin uh, because I have a lot of room to just move around, you know, to get around the Terran army, um, and he has to run a long way back to go to defend his base. Whereas in say Steps of War, um, he, yeah. he's just he's a yeah. stem and a second away from going back and defending everything you just sent to him. Yep, Steps of War. That's that's exactly the reason why it's a Terran based map. Uh huh. There's very little Zerg can do, um, and in that situation, I almost recommend. Some weird time of a baneling bust. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> that thing Idra did with the six pool and six drones looks pretty promising. <laughs> Maybe, except uh. for the fact that if Jinro knew he was going to do that and he just walled off, it's an auto loss. Exactly. <laughs> so I mean, I, I don't know. Those are just those are just things I can I can think of at the moment. Come up with something original. Burrow banelings in front of his base. I think on I on know. some maps like that, like I know on Lost Temple, um, I, I, Delta Quadrant's the same. I ha I hate Lost Temple Delta Quadrant too because of the fact that those cliffs are there. Um, I've just been doing one base roach rushes. Do you know, is it possible to defend yourself from both an all-in and from a quick drop on your cliff at the same time? Like, what okay. I'm saying is, say the Terran is walled off and you mm -hmm. lack the ability to scout in his base, you can't determine whether or not he's going to try and drop your cliff or just do that mm -hmm. standard marine tank push. Can you yeah. can you afford to rush for lair and drops or lair and spire and defend from that same push at the same time, you know? You can. The, the thing with it is is statistically you're going to be just behind. It's not so much that you can defend or not, because, again, using my whole theory of let's go ahead and sacrifice whatever we can counterattack, uh -huh. you can kind of get about even, but you're still going to be a bit behind, even if you do it perfectly. In, in, my, in my tests, personally. I mean, it, it also depends on, like, map positions. Are you far away on Delta Quadrants or are you close? If you're close, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you're, you're going to lose right away because then you're going to put bunkers at your front, and then you're just going to be like, ah, oh, I hate my life, you know? Yeah. Like that same game where you watched Idra play Jinro, and then he just put those two bunkers because Idra did the most retarded build order you can do in ZVT. And he's like, oh, good game, you win. What was he doing? What build order? Oh, he did some sort of 13 pool first in ZVT. And I, I really think that's not a not a viable build because of what Jinro did. What Jinro pool do you normally do? Um, I go hatch first and then pool. In hatch ZVT. first? Yeah. So in that situation, if he would have hatched first and had the hatchery down when the bunkers were started, do you think he could salvage the expansion still? Yeah, the trick, the trick is just... In ZBT, 
Like I'm gonna be completely opposite of my my ZVP or my ZVZ logic. You have to scout at the same time you expand. Okay. Um, even earlier, maybe in some maps like four player maps, that's okay. Mm -hmm. But.